Hi, this is Jeff Ball. Thanks for stopping by the channel. We're going to do a little bit of review on the ASI Air Plus, discuss how it compares to some of the legacy ASI Air products. If you are new to astrophotography, I think you'll get something out of this. If you are a legacy AS, ASI Air product user, I think you'll get some information out of this too. And if you're using a laptop looking for a new image capture device, I think this will give you a little bit of insight into that as well. So thanks for joining us. We're going to go out into the field and I'll do some review here in the office as well. So thanks for joining us and uh, let's jump into it. Years ago, I abandoned using a laptop in the field mainly because of the battery requirements and power requirements. And I went to utilizing Magic Lantern on my DSLR. But a few years ago, ASI really, in my opinion, changed the landscape of especially remote astrophotography image capture, even though it's very common to be using this in your backyard now, when they came up with the original ASI Air. Now, there are other options. Let me show you some of the things that I've played around with. This is the Canna Kit. It's just a real easy to put together, easy to assemble Raspberry Pi kit. And it can come, um, there are probably updated options now that this is probably a year old. This is nice if you're a DSLR imager or if you're using ZWO ASI uh, non-supported products. So if even if you use a non-ZWO product, please look into these Canna Kit Raspberry Pis. They're there may be an option for you if you're looking to get something in, in this type of format and uh, function to do remote image capture from your, from your imaging train. The NASI Air came out, wonderful system. Of course, what makes this is the software updates that they've added to the iPad. But on the hardware side of things, this was fairly limited compared to what we have today. It had, didn't have an on-off switch. It used the power button. It used the power cord. It was automatically powered. I never really utilized the HDMI, and uh, I never really utilized the remote uh, shutter trigger release. Of course, this was, as most Raspberry Pis, they use an SD card as their firmware and uh, operating system. So that has to be there, and it's limited to 32 gigabytes. So that was your storage option. Now you could utilize a secondary USB recording uh, drive like this to supplement your imaging. And you can do that on any of these ASI Airs. So the ASI Air Pro came out, maybe this is probably two years old now, maybe a two and a half. This is probably a year old. What I really like, ZWO is constantly upgrading their products. And don't hold that against them. I mean, I, they're, they're really, I think, just a unique uh, offering here in the astrophotography world. Just constantly trying to improve based on user feedback. So what happened here, they're still utilizing the Raspberry Pi system, still utilizing that 32 gigabyte SD card as their software. But they started to add these 12 volt outs. And uh, there is this remote DSLR shutter release. So now you have the option to power your dew heaters and the camera directly, uh, the, ca the camera cooler if you have a, a cooled astronomy camera. And then they added the USB 3 to the system. So that was the Pro. Now the only big problem with the ASI or Pro was this metal case now started to restrict the Wi-Fi transmission range. In my case, it was about 15 to 18 feet in my back, from my backyard to the window in my kitchen. So that was a little bit uh, frustrating, but I was able to work around it. And the reliability and the added functionality of the device is what really made it. Then, just in the last few months, ASI Air has come out with the Plus. Now, what is obvious is the Plus now has a range extender antenna. And you'll see here in a minute my experience with that. Do we still have the DC outs? There is no um, SD card for the software firmware. That is all on board, on the Raspberry Pi board itself. 
And as far as other functionalities added, that really is about it from a hard hardware perspective. It is an upgraded, I uh, believe, processor, so everything should be happening faster on the ASI Air Plus. So that's kind of a review of the hardware, what's up. Let me go out to the field. Why don't you join me as we go out into the field and see how this works in use. The ASI Air Plus connected via USB-C I actually use a converter. It wants to go into the USB 3 port and it shows up as an ASI Air Drive on the iMac. And then you can uh, look at your files and download them. This is the first night I had with the ASI Air Plus. And something I, I did, even though I have a legacy of working with ASI Air products, I really had never powered my dew heaters through the unit. So I did this night and you can see I'm having a limited input. I use the Orion Dynamo Pro to power up the unit and I'm not getting enough uh, volts here. I have a volt shortage warning. So it's a 9.9 .9 volt. And so I need to either get a, a higher volt battery or I've been using it with AC recently and it works great. So I did drop the connection, as you can see, and this is where I would normally have to set my ASI Air Pro in the window there, and that's probably about 20 feet from the imaging system. And with the ASI Air Plus, I'm able to set up the iPad here on the kitchen table. I did try to set up in the living room, and I was dropping connections there. So this starts to probably get out to 40 feet. Now, I have not tried connecting it through a network system. This is just directly connecting to the ASI Air Plus. And this night, I'm working on gathering data for my Cave Nebula and narrowband data. I think this was the 03 data night. So I went back in and selected the ASI Air, and I really never lost that connection from that position in the kitchen on the table, which is probably about 28 feet away, I would say, from the, the ASI Air Plus out in my backyard. Auto-guiding was working fantastic. All these features are fairly universal through all of the ASI Air systems, and I'm using an ASI uh, ZWO294MM Pro as the imaging camera and I'm using this is the guiding setup and the telescope mount settings I, I use the iOptron CM40 old system it does have the internal 20 gigabytes of storage and you can browse your image files as you have been able to on all the AS, other ASI airs and the auto guiding was working fantastic. It's the multi star auto guiding system that uh, ASI implemented a few months back. And you can swipe to go from image to image that's on your archive drive. So the 20 gigabyte storage is great, but you have also a, a, a micro USB slot on that US on the uh, ASI Air Plus that you could use to store images. But this is the multi-star guiding. And I am pretty conservative. I turn my guiding rate on my iOptron down to 35%. And I'm also guiding at 0.75 sidereal rate. You know, when you're previewing a live, an image that's just been downloaded during your auto run, you can work on your the, the histogram here, compress it a little bit, just to kind of see exactly what nebulosity you're getting. And uh, so I find that a nice feature. If you're new to the ASI Air system, these, these are features that will be very helpful to you. But this is running the auto run system. I do like using target just to confirm that the, the image has been targeted exactly the way I want it to be. And this is your, your auto run scheduling uh, f window and these are the light frames and I think I was capturing oh I think this was five minute exposures at this point 
This is a team on the ASIR Plus. A lot of amateurs are contributing to the development of the product, which I find to be just a great feedback for ASI Air. But this was using AC power. You can see now I'm getting 11.4 volts. I'm not getting the voltage warning, under voltage warning, and I'm powering the dew heaters, and everything is just working very nicely. This is another night where I went with the MM Pro in the backyard with the AC power, selecting the MM Pro camera and the 120 millimeter as the guide scope. And you can see again that 11.5 volts in. I'm powering the dew heaters as well as uh, the main camera and cooling the main camera. So the plus running a dew heater as well as a cooled digital astro camera really likes AC input or at least a portable battery supply that gives you at least 12 volts or more. So this was the setup last night. I'm sorry I kind of went ahead and forgot to remove the Canon RA camera. But nothing really remarkable here other than to show you this was the plus on the 130 and with the cabling that was attached, I powered the dew heaters and I had the USB uh, C cable that just went into the RA and uh, everything worked as you could see live last night. It's a beautiful night here at Calhoun County. Okay, you can see we've successfully connected to the Canon RA for this evening. It's on and connected through the USB and we just completed the polar alignment with the ASI Air Plus. We're going to see how this works as the night goes. I'll update you. Just confirming our focus and composition here before we get started on our guide scope calibration. Give you an idea how quick this downloads a full frame Canon RA image. I'm about five feet from the ASI Air Plus. And this is our composition for the night. And first time I've used a full frame on the 130 EDF. And while the, the extreme corners, edges may not be exactly perfect, everything else looks pretty darn good. So let's work on calibration. It looks like everything is working as planned. We have the auto run set up for five minute exposures. I did take the camera down to ISO 800 and we are saving to the DSLR as well as you can see here. This is our auto run, and there's our first image. I think we're looking good. My only concern is a little overexposure. I'm probably going to take some shorter subs to capture the stars. As you can see here on the the histogram down below, we're definitely getting plenty of exposure. But uh, you can see the here the highlights are being clipped. I got an average ADU of 9425. Uh, so I think I'm going to stick with that for a while, but I might go to some shorter exposures here in a little bit.
Okay, so we've seen how the ASI Air Plus works out into the field, and here's just a quick wrap up. If you are a DSLR user, or you're using a non-ZWO product, I recommend that you look at a can of kit or the latest version of the can of kit that's out there as far as your own Raspberry Pi and see if that works as a good wireless Wi-Fi transmitting device capture. Don't discount the ASI Air. If you're a DSLR user, uh, this still has great functionality. And if you're really on a budget, I would look for one of these used. This can still do great many things. And the, many of the functions on the ASI Air software still will work with the ASI Air original. Now, there are some functions that won't. Then the ASI Air Pro. Well, given its range limitations, or if you have a way, if you're very reliable in extending a network and you know how to build that out, I didn't have great success in using Wi-Fi extenders, but if you're comfortable with that, this might be a good budget option for you right now because this is gonna be, I'm guessing, significantly discount out into the used market. If you are looking to transfer from a laptop, you're using a ZWO device, or you're using a DSLR supported device and I just would recommend to get the ASI Air Plus. This right now is the state of the art. It's going to have access to all of the functions that the ASI Air app is going to make available to you and all of the hardware is really up to speed with uh, current technologies and uh, I think this is really your, your best option in today's market. I think this is just the best way to go right now if you use a ZWO ASI Air supported camera or a supported DSLR camera. So that's kind of a quick review of the legacies. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Thanks for joining me and I uh, hope you guys have clear skies.